Please state your name and title. Uh, my name is Faris Hawari. I am a professor of environmental sciences and the acting dean of natural and health sciences at Zayed University in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Okay. Would you please give a brief about your uh, background and experience? Well, I can define myself as an environmental scientist and uh, uh, usually environmental scientists look at the environment from two perspectives. One, they view the environment as a resource and also we view the environment as a hazard. So basically I study the environment from these two perspectives. I use uh, several tools uh, to study the environmental equality. Um, I use analytical uh, uh, chemical uh, tools, remote sensing tools, uh, management tools and others. So I'm, I'm an environmental scientist. How can the Gulf avoid the peak salt situation discussed and make into more economically suitable? Well, uh, you know, we can turn the uh, liability into source of profits if we can actually find a, a good uh, business case for the, uh, you know, the, the the liability, whatever, whether it's salts, carbon dioxide, or, um, you know, any type of liability. For example, for salts, we can actually uh, purify it. We can uh, uh, make it commercially grade. We can uh, uh, use it in, uh, uh, you know, the chemical industries to produce uh, acids uh, like HCl. Uh, we can uh, produce, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, commercial grades like the food salts and others, we can also use it to uh, develop a technology that I call it low tech but high impact, which is the salinity gradient solar pond, which is a technology that uses uh, uh, salts uh, in uh, uh, water ponds to store the energy and then, you know, the engineers, they um, you know, uh, designed a, pr a process or actually a technique so that they can retrieve it and uh, produce electricity that can be, uh, you know, applied into many applications such as water desalination. So basically, to answer the question, we need to think how we will turn the uh, liability into a source of profit. Okay, which brings us to the, my next question. What out-of-the-box solution do you have for the future and immediate solutions for the present? Well, um, <coughs> innovation. You know, we need to be innovative. We need to think outside of the box. We need to think of applications. We need uh, uh, also to think of uh, the uh, immediate return uh, on the investment and, in the same case, in some cases, in some areas, we need to consider patient and a strategic type of investment. Uh -huh. So all of these things, actually, together, they can uh, uh, lead us to solution. They can lead us to, uh, you know, find answers for the most troubling questions that we are facing, especially in the field of water, energy, and the food security. What can science do to make um, salt water more drinkable, things that are not being implemented right now, and help society at the same time? Well, um, desalination is the way to go. Uh, there are many uh, techniques, actually. Uh, there are a lot of new uh, inventions and innovations that are still in the labs, uh, promising, using a new uh, membrane materials, uh, using uh, uh, a new... Uh, materials in general, and uh, uh, also, the, the, but the question actually is to be innovative in how to hook up the desalination plants, whether it's a classic, can you are innovative with renewable sources of energy. So to answer the question is we need to think uh, of uh, uh, the problem in terms of providing renewable and uh, uh, clean sources of energy to produce the de salinated water. Speaking of desalination, how can you, uh, how do you think we can make desalination safe for drinking and not only for uh, human be uh, human consumption, consumption but also for fish? Yeah, well when you talk about fish, pretty much we're talking about the brine. The brine that goes, uh, which is the waste of, uh, 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 that comes from the uh, desalinated water. Well, for any uh, projects, we have to uh, conduct 
what we call it environmental impact statements. Mm -hmm. And this is a statement actually will balance the benefits and the consequences. Now, if the benefits uh, uh, more than the consequences, then we will go ahead and uh, uh, put the project forward. Uh, but also we need to think about uh, uh, the management plan, environmental management plan, uh, you know, how to transport the brine, where to dispose it, how to recycle it, and so on and so forth. The last thing that we want to think of is disposing uh, the uh, waste that's <clears throat> not a good option we need actually to uh, uh, recycle it, we need to reuse it we need to find an application for it Okay. Are there other techniques that you are looking into perhaps capturing humidity or finding a way to remove salt from the, wa the water to make it drinkable? Um, yeah, this is actually we have a, f a few students working on uh, irrigation from humidity in the, in the Gulf area, you know, during the summer, the weather is so humid. So basically, uh, what we are thinking is that, uh, you know, of uh, an invention, a technique where we can, uh, the, you know, uh, pump water into coolers and uh, also having uh, the, 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 the areas, uh, you know, uh, where we will uh, condense the water, uh, have a material that we call it hydrophilic, a material that love water. So basically, you know, when uh, water cool enough, then, uh, you know, when, 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 I'm sorry, the, the water vapor cools enough, it start actually uh, condensing. Now, if we have a material that loves water, okay. then it will take more of this uh, condensation and that will make the process uh, even more efficient. Uh, but these are actually, again, uh, students' projects and uh, uh, yeah, we encourage it. It's, it's, it's a promising uh, t technology that uh, we need really to uh, pay more attention to it. Okay. Um, how do you think that the Bahrain Science Collaboration Symposium have helped towards finding solutions in that direction? Um, have it helped or um, have the um, topic not been discussed enough? And have you figured out better solutions because of the symposium? Yeah. Well, the symposium, it's a, a, an eye-opening on a lot of uh, new fields. Uh, uh, there were some uh, good uh, uh, talks that reviewed the uh, problems, the uh, nexus between uh, uh, water, energy, and uh, uh, the environment, uh, and the food as well. And they talked about the three E's, energy, economic, and uh, environment, the interlinkage and the complexity, and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, symposium also the, created an opportunity for uh, scientists, uh, not just uh, from UK and the GCC, but also uh, among the scientists from the GCC, open doors and pathways. And uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of people, they uh, started developing and crystallizing ideas for a future collaboration. So in essence, it is a successful uh, uh, conference, a successful uh, symposium, and I think we should see more of this. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.